Hello everyone, welcome to what if Deku was deceived and becomes the heir of one for all part 1. Before we start please go support Ethan 1939 for writing that awesome fanfic, now let's begin. This is the translated version I made, there will be some wrong he or she calling here, because it's translated so let me clear Izuku is male in this story, and he has a sister named Izumi, and Shoto Todoroki is female. Prologue. The day at the UA Academy is a day of love, happiness, peace since it is February 14, Valentine's Day for singles. It is the worst day for couples, a good day to spend with your partner, but for Izuku Midorilla is the day when everything will change. After staying, Izuku was training hard to master the one for all until he reached 15%. Entry UA Academy. Lita. Hello Midorilla, happy Valentine's Day. Happy and moving his arms like a robot. Izuku. Yes hello Lita-kun, happy Valentine's Day returning the greeting. Lita. Do you think they'll give us some cards today? Cheerful. Izuku. He I don't know with a bad face when mentioning that. Lita. What's up friend? With doubt. Izuku. Nothing, let's go accelerating the pace. Lita thought that was strange, but she thought he was nervous about today. When they arrived they both opened their lockers, and Lita and Izuku saw something that surprised them. Lita. Too bad there is no letter he said discouraged and you, Midorilla. Curious. But Lita was surprised to see Izuku take out six pink cards with a heart in the middle. Lita. Wow Midorilla are six love letters congratulations happy for her friend and patting her on the back. But Izuku didn't react at all, he just stared at the cards with blank eyes for minutes. Until something brought Izuku out of his thoughts. Lita. Midorilla Izuku wake up now. That scream was enough to bring Izuku out of his thoughts. Izuku. W what's wrong Lita come alarmed by the scream. Lita. What's wrong with you, you stared at the cards for five minutes with your eyes blank, is that it? Worried about his friend. Izuku. I'm actually scared sweating a lot and alarmed, Lita. Don't worry, Midorilla are girls, not villains. Izuku. No, it's not that, it's that nervous at my previous school the girls gave me fake love letters to make fun of me, and I'm a little scared. Lita. Don't worry, Midorilla, that's a thing of the past, plus you've been popular with the girls since the festival, I'm sure they're real trying to comfort her friend. Izuku. Yes maybe already a little nervous after what his friend told him well, let's go to class Lita-kun. They both went to class and while Izuku read the letters and they were from Momo, Tsayu, Mina, Toru, Jiru and Kendo. The letter said that they would meet in the classroom after school. Izuku was encouraged as he remembered what Lita told him and although he was not a womanizer, he could not deny that his classmates were cute and he would like to be in a relationship with them. Although he didn't have a letter from the person he actually liked. Time skip after school. Izuku was nervous throughout the day, hearing Kaminari and Mineta complain about not receiving any letters, which made Izuku even more tense, since he remembered the letters that he kept in his backpack. Now Izuku was standing in front of the classroom door. One is seeing with receipts and sweating. Izuku. Don't worry, everything will be fine, you're not the same as before, now you're better, so don't worry, he told himself. Izuku entered and could see Momo, Jiru, Sayu, Mina and Tor waiting for him. Izuku. H hello g girls pp why did you call me nervous and blushing, Momo. Bb well we had a blushing, Sai. W we called you too blushing, Jiru. Stop, to tell you w what and us blushing like a tomato g g g gush she didn't finish since they interrupted her, Mina and Toru. You fell nervous it's a b joke winking the eye described so that the others would follow the game. The girls didn't understand but they played along by telling him the same thing. Izuku was staring blankly until he turned around and his hair covered his eyes and said. Izuku. Haha, <laughs> what a good joke sniff sniff letting some tears fall if only if they do it again, be careful who they do it to sniff, because it could hurt your feelings said with a broken voice and tears coming out a lot more well I have to go somewhere else goodbye as I ran away. Seeing the green haired boy like that, the girls felt the worst shit in the world until Jiru broke the silence. Jiru. Idiots angry we were supposed to confess, not destroy the feelings of the boy we like hit Mina's shoulder. Mina. Eh sorry, I didn't know what to do, she was nervous and totally sad and embarrassed. Momo. Leave her Jiru, it was also our fault for playing along sad about what they did to Izuku. Sai. Poor Midorilla chan Jiro we must fix this, but Izuku. Izuku was letting out small tears at what she was told, but then she wiped them away as she remembered Kendo. Izuku. Izuku, there is still Kendo-san, she surely won't play with your feelings like that, she is very responsible and kind to do something like that she said to herself, wiping away her tears. Izuku walked until he reached room 1B, but what she saw only hurt her more than what the girl saw. When they opened the door, Kendo was being kissed by Manama, and when they noticed Izuku's presence they separated. Kendo. I Izuku I can explain it worried about what she Izuku saw. Izuku just let out more tears and ran to her house. Kendo. Slaps Manama why did you do that, you idiot. Manama. To prove that class B is better than the stupid class A filling with an arrogant smile. Kendo. 
Idiot I Izuku I must fix this, but Izuku. Izuku just ran and ran until he reached her house, which he entered crying, worrying her mother. Izuku just threw himself on her bed and started crying. This was seen by his mother, and she asked him what happened to him and to relieve himself, Izuku told him everything until he fell asleep, his mother simply covered him with her sheets and went to the living room and called someone. Yes, hello, mom, what happened? Worried, Inko. Hello Izumi, how is everything going? Izumi. Okay mom, but why are you calling me? We both know it's not just to say hello, did something bad happen? Worried, Inko. If it's Izuku it happened again worried I'm worried that he will come back somewhat scared, Izumi. Okay, I'll go there, I'll probably arrive tomorrow worried about the condition of her younger brother, Inko. Okay, I'll wait for you, daughter, goodbye hanging up the call. After that, Inko went out to visit her friend Mitsuki and tell her what happened. But of one thing she was sure, this was only the beginning for her, and she hoped that with the help of her son, she could stop what was coming. Part 2 Traumas The day is a nice day, the birds were singing, the flowers were blooming, and the sky was totally blue and beautiful, a great day for most people, but for a boy with green hair it was a horrible day, Izuku Midorilla woke up with dark circles under his eyes, and with a horrible and careless face, yesterday he was crying until he fell asleep, and he felt horrible remembering what happened the day before. Izuku simply spent the day at home since he didn't feel like going to class, much less seeing the girls' faces. Izuku just fumbled around until his mother spoke. Inko. Izuku today we will have a very special visit. With a happy face. Izuku. And that person is. With doubt. Inko couldn't speak as the doorbell rang. Inko. Ooh he has already arrived going to open the door. When he opened the door he could see a girl with green hair, emerald eyes, she was carrying several suitcases, and Izuku recognized that person just by seeing her. Inko. Hello daughter, you look very pretty in those clothes, come in let me help you with the suitcases, giving her permission to come in and helping her with the suitcases. Izuku just saw his sister pass by and shed a few tears because they hadn't seen each other in a long time since she started studying in the United States. Izumi. Hello Oni-chan waving with a happy smile. Izuku only started to hug her sister after a long time, while she hugged her, she let out fine tears and said. Izuku. Welcome sniff one chance sniff with a smile what are you doing here? Izumi. What? I need an excuse to visit my brother and my mother? Asking playfully, Izuku. Not only did you surprise me wiping tears, the Midorilla family, after talking for a while, heard the doorbell ring, and Inko went to see who she was. When she opened it, she was surprised to see the Bakugo at the entrance. Mitsuki. Hello Inko-chan with joy and giving a safe to Bakugo to say hello. Bakugo. H hello Mrs. Midorilla with obviously false respect and politeness. Mitsuki. Is Izuku here? Cheerful, Inko. If in fact she is with she couldn't finish since Izuku and Izumi went to see who she was. Izuku. Oka-san who is it walking with her mother next to Izumi watching the Bakugo. Mitsuki. Ara hello Izuku, Izumi what a coincidence with joy. Izuku. Hello Mitsuki-chan, H hello catch and waving to both and Bakugo a little nervous. Bakugo. Deck she couldn't finish since her mother gave her a sape so that she could speak well I say. I Izuku the last thing said with effort. Mitsuki. Izuku, how nice to see you and you too, Izumi, Izuku, in fact, there is someone who wants to see you with a smile on her face. After that an ash-haired girl approached and greeted the Midorillas. Izumi. H hello Izuku kun a little nervous until she saw Izumi. Ah hello broccoli addressed to Izumi with disgust. The girl was a young version of her mother and a female version of Bakugo. Izumi. Who you were a Muslim looking at Kasumi with disgust. Both girls looked at each other with faces like they wanted to kill each other, and the others only saw how sparks flew when they saw how their gazes collided. Izuku. WW well H hello Kasumi, you wanted to talk to me nervous to see how they both gave each other death glances. Kasumi. Why yes I wanted to give you this blushing and giving her a box with chocolates inside it. Izuku was surprised by the gesture and accepted it gladly. Izuku. T thank you Kasumi-chan happy and somewhat blushing at the gesture. After that scene and both mothers said that they were going to study at UA with Izuku and that they would start next week. Time skip. The week went by quickly and somewhat fun, since Kasumi and Izumi Sela spent close to Izuku. He was happy that his sister and his childhood friend were happy to see him, although secretly they had hidden reasons for always being with him. Dot. Now we see Izuku walking to UA with Izumi and Kasumi glued to each other and holding each other's arms, putting Izuku's arm in the middle of each other's breasts. The boys around looked at Izuku with anger for having both beauties by his side, and Bakugo, who was behind them, only clicked his tongue. The boys went to Principal Nezu to check each one's registration and placing both in the same room as Izuku and Bakugo. Azawa. Well my kids making everyone pay attention to them today we have two new students surprising everyone and making Mineta and Kaminari get excited you can come in now. They both passed and all the girls and boys were surprised. 
The boys were delighted by how cute both of them were, especially Kaminari and Mineta, but they were also surprised along with the girls, since they were a female version of their two companions. Izumi. Hello, I'm Izumi Midorilla, a pleasure with joy, Izuku's older sister, and my quirk is pyrokinesis, Basumi. Hello, I'm Kasumi Bakugo Dryly, and I'm the sister of the idiot over there pointing to Bakugo, and my quirk is explosion, Bakugo. Shiny angry, everyone was surprised by the revelation that they were their classmate sisters. Uraka. Deku-kun, you never told us that you had a sister getting Izuku's attention, Hiroshima. Yes, bros, they never told us. Bakugo. TSCK she's not my sister she's a monster while she looked away angrily, Asumi. How did you call me an idiot annoyed, Bakugo. I called you a stupid monster angry, both brothers were pulling out holdings from their hands angrily, Izumi. Well, I was studying in the United States just like Kasumi, but we came to be heroes like my only chance saying happily. At that moment everyone could confirm that they were brothers. Izumi was just as happy as Izuku and Kasumi was just like Bakugo. Azawa. Well, it feels like time to start class he said discouraged and bored. Time skip break. Everyone was in the cafeteria eating except for a green-haired boy who was behind the school. Izuku. What do the girls want now disheartened and nervous? Flash black. Momo. Izuku, during lunch time, can you come to the courtyard behind the school? Nervous, Izuku. Edo Yo couldn't finish since Jiru spoke. Jiru. Please, it's important nervous because of the green haired man's response. Izuku. Oh okay nervous. Then everyone went out to recess, but a green haired girl and a grey haired girl listened to everyone. Then flash black. After two minutes the girls arrived at the scene. Hendo. H hello Midorilla San nervous. Momo. You're wondering why we called you, right? Nervous. They are all nervous and blushing. Jiru. WW well we called you P to apologize, we didn't mean to hurt your feelings nervous, Sayu. Yes and a besides you, you blushing and nervous, 6. We like you everyone blushing like a tomato, Izuku was in socks and two hidden girls were burning with rage, but Izuku sure said, Izuku. Gee girls I think you're cute and everything, but now I can't accept your feelings disappointing everyone, but I'm not rejecting you, I'm just saying that I can't forget what you did to me, so I'll give you a second chance, so you understand what they did. And maybe in the future we can become something more nervous and blushing at the last thing. The girls were happy that he would forgive them, but a little sad that he didn't agree to see their boyfriend, but they could understand what Izuku said, so they were happy. Although two girls could only curse what a good person Izuku is. Note. Izuku is a very good person, but that's going to change, haha him you ha cough cough sorry. The break time ended and the girls, even though they were not completely happy, were satisfied with it. Time skip. The classes passed normally, except for Izumi and Kasumi's gaze, which focused on a happy Izuku, and each one had a different thought. Izumi. Well it seems that he will not return, but it bothers me that he will forgive those girls, but well, he is very innocent and a good person to have a grudge against someone. Kasumi. Well it seems like he won't do the same thing again, and I hope he doesn't, but I'm angry seeing that I forgive those gitches, but what are we going to do to him? Time skip lunch. Izumi. Only chance say ah feeding Izuku in his mouth. Kasumi. No, Izuku, try mine, your sisters, it sure tastes like shit she said, trying to convince Izuku to eat her dresser. The three of them were eating in the patio, sitting on the grass as if it were a picnic. Izuku. Calm down girls, I have mine showing her lunch. Izuku was trying to calm them both down until Izuku remembered something. Izuku. I'm sorry, but I have to go because I remembered something worried and eating her lunch in the blink of an eye. Izumi. And that's it. Izuku. I have a friendly soccer game with class B, I'm sure my classmates are waiting for me, sorry, goodbye running away. Izuku was already gone, so there was an awkward silence until Izumi spoke. Izumi. Kasumi, I'll be direct calling the attention of the aforementioned what are you doing here? I would be. Kasumi. I can't see my ex-boyfriend. It would be also I should say the same, since you have not visited him since you mentioned going out with your sugar daddy right? With mockery besides, you abandoned him for him, you moved to the United States because you sugar daddy you got a job there. Izumi. Shut up don't mention it angry when remembering her ex. Izumi. Who trouble in paradise with mockery am I deceiving you? Izumi didn't respond, she just stayed silent and counterattacked. Izumi. And what about you? You're not a Santa either, remember when you were dating and you cheated on him. Izumi. Gitch how do you know that? Annoyed. Izuku. She told me before she lost her memory she said mockingly when she saw that she touched a nerve because of that memory, I still remember when she came to me looking for help for what you did to her. Flash black, Izuku was 12 years old and was in the first year of high school. He had recently confessed to Kasumi since he had liked her since they were children. Now we see Izuku looking for his girlfriend because he forgot his cell phone when he went to the infirmary because he said he was I felt bad at lunchtime. Izuku. Where is Kasumi-chan? 
she said innocently, until Izuku arrived at the infirmary and heard some strange noises. Izuku innocently opened the door and saw his girlfriend kissing another boy older than Izuku. Kasumi. I Izuku this is not what she couldn't finish as Izuku just let go of Kasumi's cell phone and ran away while she shed tears. Kasumi. Izuku wait worried about the green-haired man. Chiko. Don't worry, I'm sure it's fine with arrogance we better continue, okay. Kasumi didn't pay attention and she went out to look for the green-haired boy, but she never found him that day. Then flash black. Izumi. I still remember how he cried and asked why you did that to him, well I comforted him she said arrogantly and seeing Kasumi that she had her gaze lowered and her eyes were covered by her hair. Kasumi just remembering those moments made her heartache. And she only thought about counter-attacking. Kasumi. And what, you and Inko's door mistreated him for not having a quirk when he said that, Izumi's gaze darkened. Flash black. Izuku was seven years old and his life was sad since his mother and sister mistreated him and ignored him for not having a quirk like Izumi and at his school it was the same. Now we see Izuku beaten and lying on the ground full of bruises and dirty, as several children at school made fun of him for not having a quirk. Izuku. Why? Sniff sniff I didn't ask not to have a quirk while he was crying on the floor. After a while Izuku got up and went to his house, and when he arrived he only received insults from Izumi and some hits from Inko. Then flash black. Izumi was letting out some tears as he remembered how they mistreated him. Izumi. Maybe we insulted him and hit him sniff, but we both learned from our mistakes after his accident, and he doesn't remember anything else, he doesn't remember any of it, just a little of his childhood from the age of 6, and the rest until the 13 doesn't remember. Izumi and Kasumi just stayed silent and then went to watch his brother and friend's game. Time skip. Already the match in which Class A won by defeating Class B since Izuku used 5% of the one for all. Izuku had already decided to propose to his secret love Achako Yuraka and gave her a small note that said that after class they would meet behind the school. Izuku was nervous and sweating a lot. Izuku. Come on Izuku calm down, he said to himself you fraught the hero killer, this must be nothing to you. Izuku was walking to the agreed place, but when he arrived he was shocked when he saw Lita kissing Yuraka. Lita. I thought you liked Izuku. Separating from the kiss, Yuraka. No I would never like that useless man with a lustful smile, I am only yours kissing him, but you have to go, someone wrote me a love letter, so let's see each other again he couldn't finish as he noticed the presence of Izuku and was startled. Yuraka. D Deku kun, I'm not there he couldn't finish since Izuku ran away without looking back, but the girls, Momo, Jiru, Mina, Toru, Tsayu, Kendo, Izumi and Kasumi were looking for Izuku, but Izumi and Kasumi looked at them with a bad face. Izumi. And well, why do they want to find my oni chan looking at Izuku in a bad way for what they did to him before? Note. Izumi and Kasumi know what they did to Izuku ace days, Izumi because of her mother who told him and Kasumi because of hers. Sai. We just want to ask Midorilla chan out Jiro. Sister and ex-girlfriend looked at this with disapproval, but that idea faded when they saw Izuku running while she cried outside the school. Izumi and Kasumi worried more since they didn't want to get another strong mental blow. Momo. What did she happen to Midorilla san worried, but just then Lita and Yuraka come running. Yuraka. Hey agitated you've seen Izuku here. Jiru. Yes, she was crying, what happened to her? Worried about her love. Yuraka. W well Edo. This is how they told her what she saw and heard Izuku. Kasumi. What did you say, you bucking gitch angry at what she said about her friend. Izumi. Kasumi we have to find out if she continues like this, he she will wake up worried. Mina. Ooh how the curious. Izumi. You see before, Izuku was not the good and innocent boy that you now know. Flashback, after two weeks that Izuku was depressed by Kasumi's deception, he changed. Totally, now he was cold and didn't care about anything, but above all he always fought with those who called him useless or quirkles. Izuku was a monster in a fight, he always won and defeated his opponents, he had no mercy, and for a quirk he had incredible strength. His mother stopped hitting him when she found out this since she was afraid that he would hit her like other times, when she tried to get even with him, or when she called him useless. One day the whole family went shopping but at one point while crossing the street, a truck was speeding towards Izumi and Inko, but before they were hit, Izuku pushed them out of the way, but in exchange for him feeling the blow. Izuku later spent a month in the hospital in a coma, and when he woke up he didn't remember anything, only a little of his childhood, but the dramatic memories he only remembered in white, and so at that moment the sadistic and fighting Izuku was replaced by the innocent, friendly and nice. From that day on, both green-haired girls reflected on his mistakes and decided to change and be kind to him, because regardless of whether they hit him or insulted him, he saved them both regardless. Then flash back, Izumi. Since then he doesn't remember anything, the doctor told us that if we wanted to restore his memory, we might have to make Izuku experience a trauma or a similar memory from his past worried, since three of his traumas had already been repeated, Izumi. 
Yes, but you gitches had to send everything to shit pointing to the other girls present, Izumi. That doesn't matter anymore, now we have to find Izuku. All. Hi, with Izuku. Izuku simply ran and ran until he got tired and fell on the floor of a park not far from there, he just fell to the ground crying, and while it started to rain. Izuku? Why? Sniff sniff I just want to be happy sniff sniff. After a while Izuku fell unconscious from exhaustion. Izuku's mind, oh music, Izuku woke up little by little in a totally black and dark space, but little by little, he changed to a beautiful meadow of white flowers. Izuku slowly stood up and saw a small version of him wearing an All Might suit. Izuku dot and child Izuku, who you finally came looking at Izuku, Izuku? Who are you? Seeing the small version of him, Izuku dot n. That's obvious, don't you think? Izuku? Are you me? Izuku dot n. So Izuku and him two pointing to a teenage Izuku. Izuku dot a teenage Izuku, we are both you, we are the memories, emotions and feelings that you forgot when you had your accident, and we come to show you who you really are. They both approached and touched Izuku, reminding him of her past. Izuku only shed tears as he remembered every mistreatment, trauma, insult, etc. that was said to him throughout his life. He could only fall to his knees and sob. Izuku. No, it can't be this is not my life, these are not my memories denying it while he cried, and the other two versions of him turned into black smoke, little by little the white roses I've in changing color. Those are your memories child, you have to accept them and become stronger. A voice said while a dark shadow with glasses appeared in front of Izuku. Izuku. Who are you? The shadow became lighter and showed a man with hair and a black trench coat with glasses. I am Ken, Ken Kaneki, I am the third bearer of the one for all. Izuku. And here you are, aren't you dead? With doubt, Kaneki. No, I am alive here pointing inside his chest in the core of one for all along with the other bearers. Izuku. The others too. Kaneki. Sure look pointing behind him showing his predecessors. Izuku. And you're coming to talk to Maigo. Kaneki. To hit harder boy and of course to inherit my powers touching Izuku's head showing them his memories. Izuku. I understand but why that form of yours if you have many? Doubtful. Kaneki. Because this form is more suitable for you because of your other versions remembering the other two Izakas. Izuku. And why do you try so hard to help a useless person like me? Discouraged. Kaneki. Don't say that Izuku, you are much more special than you think encouraging Izuku, and also those who suffered a lot should support each other, giving him a small smile and putting a hand on his shoulder. When Izuku said and saw the small smile he simply hugged him, and when that happened a light cut down on Izuku, and all the white flowers turned red. Everything suddenly turned black and Izuku fell into a deep void. His body changed and his hair and eye color also his freckles disappeared and his skin became pale, and when he opened his left eye, his pupil was red and its black has sclerotica. Part 3 Reborn, the green-haired man's friends were just looking for Izuku, and Kasumi and Izumi were just praying that it wasn't too late. At that moment Momo sees the green-haired boy unconscious on the ground, while little by little his hair and skin color changed. And then Izuku wakes up, but his left eye is different, his pupil was red like blood, and his sclera was completely black, scaring his friends and sister. Izuku got up while he was still wet from the rain and looked at his classmates. But at that moment that Izumi and Kasumi saw him they knew that they were too late. Izuku. What's wrong? It seems like they saw a dead man with a crooked smile that made Izumi and Kasumi's blood run cold. Izumi. Oni-chan I is that you? Scared. Izuku. Of course I am sister getting up and looking Izumi in the eyes. At that moment Izumi could see the basic in his eyes and at that moment he knew that the kind and kind Izuku was missing. Yuraka. Deku Kunai he couldn't finish as Izuku moved at an impressive speed and grabbed Yuraka by the neck and lifted her up. Izuku. Never say that to me again, do you understand me? Showing the deep emptiness that he had for eyes. Lita. Nidorilla lets go of your partner worried about how Izuku was acting now. Izuku only let go of the brunette and they are ready to leave, but a blonde stopped him. Kasumi. What did you do with Izuku? Holding him by the arm and with some tears. Izuku. Kasumi, you should already know turning to look at his companions the tender and innocent Izuku died, all of you were slowly killing him, along with the mistreatment of Inko Midorilla's dog. Now only I am left. That surprised everyone who didn't know about the abuse that Izuku suffered, and Kasumi and Izumi could only shed tears. Izumi. I know you hate us niff releasing tears, but please, be my brother again, be the tender Izuku who always gives everyone a second chance. Izuku. No, I don't hate you bringing joy to his sister and Kasumi for a moment, because if it weren't for every mistreatment, insults and torture that you did to me, I wouldn't have opened my eyes, nor would I be who I am now at that moment the joy faded and gave way to a lot of sadness, so thank you and goodbye. Izuku alone left, leaving a crying Izumi and Kasumi and the others present surprised and curious about what he said about his mistreatment. 
Time skip. The Midorilla family was worried about Izuku since he had not yet arrived home, Izumi told her mother everything, and she was worried, after crying for a while, she just waited for her son to talk, but he never came. Time skip UA Academy. Izumi and Kasumi entered the school, Kasumi with red eyes from crying all night, and Izumi with bags under her eyes, from waiting for her brother who never arrived. Kasumi. Tell me, he never came home, right? Izumi. No depressed. They only entered their classroom being watched by their classmates, those who were with them saw them in a strange way since after the small spectacle that they caused they both had to tell the others what happened. Izuku's lovers saw them with anger, Lita and Yuraka saw them with pity, and they felt bad because for them the innocent Izuku had disappeared, and their other companions saw them surprised by the expressions they had and how they looked. At that moment Azawa entered as always. Azawa. Well, my children, today we are going to have a special training with Class B which he said to encourage the others, but at one point he saw the green-haired boy's absence Izumi, where is Izuku? Izumi. I don't know worried about her brother he didn't come back last night. At that moment the door opened showing a black-haired man with glasses and the UA uniform. Izuku. Sorry for being late Azawa sensei, I just fell asleep with a small smile. Azawa. And you are. With doubt. Izuku. You don't recognize your son. I'm Izuku with a beautiful smile that made the girls blush, but I miss Izumi and Kasumi. That clarification surprised the others, since Izuku was now a little taller and his hair, eyes and skin had changed. Akugo. So you're back and Izuku. With a side smile. Izuku. Of course Kachin with a smile. At that, both of them bumped fists while everyone else was with their eyes wide and their jaws on the floor. Hamanari. Am I high or did Bakugo call Izuku by his name? Shocked. Hokoyami. And he greeted, he bumped fists with Izuku and didn't say shiny or an insult. Bakugo. Are you bucking extras watching me making small explosions? Shaka. He's back. Bakugo. Shut up half and half. Hiroshima. Wait bro, don't you hate Izuku? With doubt. Bakugo. I hate the weak Izuku who always smiles hatefully remembering the old Izuku not this one, I hope you haven't changed. Izuku. No, in fact now I'm a better and new Izuku with a smile. Note. Bakugo began to respect the sadistic Izuku since he liked that side of him, but when he returned to being the weak Izuku, he again teased and insulted him. Mina. And that new change. Somewhat intrigued although she already knows about her traumas etc. Izuku. Why? You do not like. Giving him a smile. Mina. And no tea it's just that you surprised me blushing. Azawa. Well everyone, go put on your hero suits and go to the beta field. He said bored and getting into his sleeping bag. Everyone paid attention to them, but Izumi and Kasumi along with Lita and Yuraka watched Izuku analyze the situation while he spoke with Bakugo. Time skip beta training camp. Everyone was in their hero outfits even Kasumi and Izumi. Izumi outfit, Izumi costume. At that time all Migth, Vlad, Midnight, Azawa and Cements appeared. All Migth. Very young people today we are going to have a fight between class A against class B. Everyone present was excited by what was said, especially Bakugo and Monoma. Midnight. Hey, isn't Izuku missing? Asking about his favorite student and something else that is secret. No one answered as they felt a gloomy aura in the air that alerted the teachers, and footsteps were heard through the entrance hallway. Everyone was alert for what he could do, but Bakugo calmed them down. Bakugo. Calm down, it's just Izuku no interest. Everyone didn't believe it, but down the hallway a shadow could be seen that scared everyone. Everyone was terrified, including the teachers, until the lightest shade of ISO showed the now black-haired man with a black trench coat, red gloves, and a suit of the same color. Izuku, noticing all the looks on him, just asked. Izuku. Well, how do I look? All Migth. M. Midorilla Shonen. Highly strung. Izuku. Hello Oromato Happy. Midnight. What happened to your hero suit? Confused, but when she saw the young man correctly he looked more handsome and for some reason it excited the teacher. Glad. And to your hair, skin and eyes he said seriously, Izuku. A little change of look he said with a smile that made all the girls present blush. All Migth. Well then let's begin somewhat uneasy about the new appearance of his successor, Izuku. By the way taking out a paper this is my new hero name handing the paper to Izawa. Izawa. Tell me, did you notify the director? Well he read the boy's new hero name, yes, yes I do. At that moment a combination of rat, dog, bear appeared down the hallway showing Principal Nezu. Note. We all know what he and the teachers are like so no image is necessary, Yuraka. Deck she didn't finish since Izuku gave her a completely cold look that scared her, I say Izuku-kun, why did you change your hero name? Nervous, Izuku. I didn't like being called useless anymore he said simply, Yuraka. But Izuku interrupts her, Izuku. I know what it means to you, but to me it means useless and I don't like it, so please respect my decision, okay? Giving him a small smile, Yuraka. He it's okay a little depressed. After that talk the fighting began, leaving a tie in the battles. Alright. 
Wow it's a tie with his typical smile, Azawa. Yes, the decisive battle is seeing the names Izuku versus Monoma. Those mentioned went to the arena, Monoma had an arrogant smile, and Izuku only remained serious and calm. Monoma. What's wrong? Scared. Arrogant, Izuku. From you? He doubted it he said cold, but the spectators, Kendo. Who do you think won? Asking his friends, Momo. I don't know. But I trust Izuku. Sai. Me too Jiro, Hetsutetsu. I support Monoma happy, Ibarra. We have to support our class it would be, Yui. If I do the same, I support Monoma it would be, at that only Bakugo laughed with a sideways smile. Ryaiko. What are you laughing at? Doubtful, Pony. Yes curious, Bakugo. Hahaha, ha, ha. this battle is already decided with a smile, Hetsutetsu. And how do you know that? Bakugo. Because the Izuku who had mercy disappeared while looking at Izuku, now there is only the sadistic Izuku who destroys his enemies without mercy with a smile, in the battle, midnight. Well, are you ready? Both young men nodded. Midnight. Okay, start. Monoma just enlarged his fists like Kendo and started attacking Izuku. Kendo was surprised since she didn't know when he touched her to copy her quirk. Izuku just easily dodged the attacks. Izuku. That's all. That only irritated the blonde, and he began to destroy the ground to throw debris at the black-haired man. Everyone was surprised since she didn't even make an effort to use her quirk to avoid the debris. In a moment Monoma found an opening and tried to crush the black-haired man like a fly in her hands. Everyone was scared since they only saw the boy's legs and thought he had been crushed until they heard a voice. Izuku. The truth is I expected more from class B separating the blonde's giant hands with his own strength. Well now it's my turn with a somewhat sadistic smile and his left eye in his ghoul form. Monoma, seeing his eye, was a little scared, but he didn't care and continued trying to crush it without success. Izuku activated the one for all at 5%, escaping Monoma's hands in the blink of an eye and appearing behind him. Izuku. You're just trash whispering in the ear of the blonde who hadn't reacted. He only vaulted and when he did so he received a blow to the face that broke his nose. Monoma. That's enough he didn't finish as Izuku appeared in front of him and kicked him out. Izuku. I already know how Bakugo feels when destroying his rival stepping on Rubio's chest, making him moan in pain, he feels disgusted with a small smile. Everyone was amazed at how easily he took down Monoma, and Bakugo had a smile at the last thing the boy said. Izuku. Now tell me, how many is 1007? Monoma. Rot you with effort in his words. Hearing that, Izuku just stepped on the floor and broke one of Monoma's fingers, making him scream. Monoma. Ah with pain in his hand. Izuku. That's not the answer I wanted, so I'll repeat it to you one more time, how many is 1007? The blonde didn't answer, and Izuku broke another finger. Izuku. How many is 1007? Monoma dot 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 breaking another finger. Izuku. How many is 1007? Monoma finally broke down and responded. Monoma dot dot 993 sniff 986 979 crying from the pain of his fingers. Izuku. Well now you can go to sleep knocked out with a blow to the face. Everyone present was in shock since he not only broke and tortured his partner, but he didn't do all that effortlessly. His classmates and teachers only watched as the black-haired man lifted the blonde by the shirt, bringing him with a cold look. His classmates were scared by the torture he applied to the blonde, but a certain explosive blonde was watching the scene with pride. The black-haired man's sister and Kasumi were nervous, since seeing his cold and emotionless gaze reminded them of the sadistic Izuku that he was when he was young. The teachers were surprised since the tender and innocent boy tortured one of his classmates, but a certain teacher for some reason was excited, licking her lips, so he was her favorite student. Izuku. Well it looks like I won with a smile. At that moment everyone reacted and one of the blonde's colleagues took him to the infirmary. Time skip exit. All the classmates were talking and murmuring about a certain now black-haired boy who talked to Bakugo, as if they were lifelong friends and never bonded over hate. Until a certain ash blonde interrupted them. Kasumi. H hello I Izuku-kun, do you want to come with us for a walk showing Izumi, Momo, Jiru, Sayu, Lita and Yuraka, Izuku? Sure Kasumi-chan with a smile that made her blush are you coming Kachin? Bakugo. TSCK whatever regardless, time skip, everyone was leaving and went to the mall and some stores to distract themselves. Izumi and Kasumi watched Izuku chat with Momo, Jiru and Sayu, while he gave them a smile that made them blush, but they did not let their guard down. Time skip nights, the brothers Midorilla and Bakugo said goodbye, and each entered their house. Inko, upon seeing her son, did not recognize him at first, but after an explanation from Izumi, she just cried and hugged her son, and asked for forgiveness for everything. He just caressed her head and told her that everything is fine, don't hold a grudge against them because they hid from me about her other personality, since she understood it, and after a little reconciliation, Izuku and her family went to sleep. 
Part 4 Black Reaper After the small fight between Class A and Class B, Izuku was the interest of his classmates and several other girls. The Way Academy lunch Everyone ate while chatting, but for everyone there a young man with black hair was the center of everyone's attention, since the little torture that our beloved protagonist gave him was not unnoticed by the school, since Monoma no longer shouts or insults Class A in fact he seems to be a little traumatized. Now we see a black-haired man who was elegantly eating his lunch, while well, all the girls thought that he was some kind of prince, and the boys saw him with some hatred for that. Izuku. The food was delicious with a small smile. Izumi. Yes, mom prepared lunch today with joy. Bakugo. Mine tastes like shit, you can tell that my mother prepared it with anger. Asumi. What do you say if he is good tasting his brother's food? Bakugo. Will you shut up angry? Asumi. Make me challenging Bakugo. They both made small explosions in their hands, and those who saw it only had a drop of sweat on the back of their necks, but a certain black-haired man was a little amused by what he saw, and that was noticed by his sister. Izumi. It seems that Oni-chan is having fun although he worries me a little about his change, so he doesn't hate us, I hope he keeps it up. The entertaining fight was stopped by the bell that announced the return to their halls. The class, Azawa. Well today we have some visits from some of her senpais, come by without interest and sleepy. When opening the door, three young people could be seen, the first a blonde with a smile, the second a black-haired man with a strange look, and the last a blue-haired girl with a cute smile. Hello everyone, we are the big three. Izuku. The three what? Hiroshima. You don't know them? They are the big three of the UA excited. Hello, hey why do you have horns? Curious. Mina. Well. Are you a crow? Moved. Though Koyami. Well. Why do you have a bitter face? The Kugo. What did you call me? Angry. The Jaira let us introduce ourselves before asking questions calming her friend. Hello everyone, I am Mirio Tagata, one of the big three with a smile. I am Najira Hadu, a pleasure happy. I I am he didn't finish and just started looking against the wall I can't Mirio, even though I imagined them as potatoes, his body is still the same with a depressive aura. Najira. This is Tamaki Amajiki, only he has problems being under pressure touching his back comforting him. Izuku. It seems like he has self-esteem issues. Azawa. Well they are here too was interrupted by Mirio. Mirio. To challenge them to a fight with a smile. Everyone was surprised, but an explosive boy, upon hearing the word combat, only got excited and quickly accepted the proposal, saying that he was going to crush them. I'm skip training camp. Everyone was in their physical education uniforms except our protagonist who had his hero suit that intimidated everyone present. Hiroshima. Hey Izu bro why do you have your hero suit on? Izuku. Well, they forgot to wash it, and I don't want to smell bad with a small smile. Izumi. Hey Oni-chan, did you never tell us what your new hero name was? Izuku. Well my hero name is Black Reaper. Everyone was surprised when they heard that. Izumi. And why that name? Izuku. When he is in battle they will know leaving his companions in doubt. Izawa. Well, are you ready? Gaining everyone's attention. All. Hi. Note. Everything happened as in the anime, except that only Momo, Jiru and Shaka were missing for knocking out. Izuku only watched for a while as his classmates fell like flies, and he only saw his senpai analyzing his quirk in detail. Momo. How do I defeat them so easily? Nervous. Shaka. What is his quirk? Mirio. My quirk is penetration I can go through anything making myself intangible. Mirio just disappeared through the ground and in a moment appeared behind the bicolor. She just prepared herself to receive the blow that never came, and when she opened her eyes, Izuku was stopping her arm by intertwining hers with his and using force. Izuku. I'm sorry but I won't allow you to do that Mirio was left in shock when she felt a strong elbow on her left lung and making her retreat. Izuku. I must admit that your quirk is very good, in fact when you graduate you will surely enter the top of heroes easily, but you still have a weakness she said, with a cold and analytical look surprising Tamaki and Najire. Mirio. It seems like you realized it. Sore from the blow. All of his other companions who were already somewhat recovered, listened to the two small talk. Izuku. It took me a bit, but I finally discovered it. Your only weak point walking until you are a few steps away from the blonde you have to wait 6 seconds to use your quirk again, I only need 6 seconds, those 6 seconds I need to defeat you. Izuku activated one for all at 5%, and at full speed, he hit Mirio in the stomach that stunned him, and then kicked him that sent him a few meters back. Najire and Tamaki were amazed since even they had a hard time landing a hit on the blonde. Mirio then just reacted and became intangible again and sank to the ground. Izuku. Girls, please leave, I'll take care of it saying and ordering the three girls who were left standing. Momo. But. Izuku. Don't worry, I'll take care of it giving him a smile that only conveyed security. When the three saw that smile, they only followed orders and retired to watch the fight. Mirio suddenly went after Izuku's back, but the black-haired man kicked that Mirio was able to avoid since he was still intangible. 
Izuku just stood still and waited for his enemies to come out so he could attack him more easily. Azawa. I see seeing and understanding what the black-haired man was doing. Najire. What's wrong Azawa-sensei? Azawa. Izuku only lets Mirio attack so he can attack him more easily and tire him out seeing his student strategy. Mirio was getting tired little by little, and Izuku remained like a rose, until Mirio understood that what the black-haired man wanted was to tire him out so that he could attack more easily, and he followed his example and just stayed under the ground resting for a while. The black-haired man will understand that he discovered his plan only by talking. Izuku. Well, are you tired already? Then with a small smile it's my turn. Izuku only took out four tentacles from his back, and his left eye changed color, surprising everyone, and he jumped and then hit the ground with his tentacles, making Mario come out of hiding. The black-haired boy's classmates were amazed by the tentacles, but they were also scared, since it seemed that it gave a more sinister and terrifying touch to the boy with the glasses. Everyone at that moment understood why the name, they understood everything since when she saw his friend she only saw his own death reflected in those cold and analytical eyes. Izuku activated one for all at 10% and covered in blood-colored rays, he appeared next to the blonde, giving him a strong blow with his tentacles, sending him flying until he hit the wall, making him bleed a little from his head. When Mirio opened his eyes a little he could only see that shadow that just by seeing it, he saw his own death or the reaper coming to Asia to take and tear out his soul. Izuku only appreciated Mirio's people sticking his tentacle just a few feet away from his head, terrifying him. Izuku. Do you give up? With a look colder than ice. Mirio. Why yes Shinigami-sama closing his eyes waiting for everything to end. Izuku. I'm not the Shinigami, I'm just a normal boy giving him a small smile. When Mirio opened his eyes he could only see the boy's smile that calmed him down a little, and then the black-haired man gave him his hand to help him get up. All his companions just watched as one of the big three succumbed to fear and surrendered. And a girl with light blue hair was intrigued by the Chico who beat her partner. Azawa. Well now everyone here ordered his students to come I hope that you have learned from your partner since, instead of attacking without knowing he studied his opponent and found his weakness. Everyone nodded, but one eye of each of them was on the black-haired man who was only thinking about asking her friend Mei for a favor. They might as well go change and Izuku looks at the aforementioned you, and I will have a talk about what happened okay. Izuku. Hi. Everything was about to change, but a light blue hair stopped our protagonist. The gyre. Wait taking the black-haired man's hand can I talk to you for a moment? Izuku. Sure Najire senpai with a smile. Izuku was next to the blue-haired girl in a place somewhat away from the others, and he was in front of Najire who is red for some reason. Izuku. And why did you call me? Najire. W well let oh shit Najire, you brought him here as if you were going to confess your feelings to him, just calm down, he's just a boy, a boy with porcelain skin, beautiful hair and eyes aia what am I thinking? Okay just calm down and tell him that you just want to be his friend, so he can tell you how he is so strong well I want to be your friend. Izuku. Sure, no problem, you can be my friend giving him a panty wedding smile. Najire, seeing that smile, just blushed and thought he was an angel. Najire. WW well I am leaving as she ran away like lightning. Izuku just saw that and laughed a little and just kept walking until he changed and went home. Part 5 Test. The day is a normal day, and we see a black-haired man going to the support workshop to ask his friend Mei for an improvement. Izuku was calm and happy, his life has been something very interesting lately, Najire has been attached to the black-haired man to ask him how he is so strong, but Izuku always makes excuses or simply tells him that he is strong, because he trained very hard to improve. Instead, his classmates and teacher asked about his new quirk that he used against Mirio, but he simply said that he didn't know that he just got carried away. Now we see Izuku at the door of the workshop and knocking on the door. Izuku. Well the time has come the boy only knocked three times and then the entire door exploded, but Izuku dodged the explosion with his speed. Izuku. Hello Mei waving to his friend who was on the floor with some scratches and oil all over her body. Mei. Hello sorry, who are you? Doubtful. Izuku. Don't you remember the boy who always helps you test your babies? Mei. Wait are you Izuku what happened? Surprised. Izuku. Just a change of look with Simplisa well May comes to ask you to make something for me. May. And that's it. Izuku. Well, I want you to make me a weapon giving him some plans. May just saw the plans and was amazed at the type of weapon she wanted her to make. May. Wow this is surprising and it is quite a challenge. Surprised. Izuku. Can you do it? May. Of course yes, but it will take a week or two reading the plans a little hey, how do you want me to do this highlighting part of the plan? Izuku. With this giving him a small package just try to combine it with a weapon and it will work. Mei opened the package and was surprised but a little scared. Mei. Aizuku, what is this? Nervous because she saw some red spots. Izuku. Don't worry, Mei is mine, you don't have to be scared. Mei. 
But I see nerve endings and it looks like it's some kind of tentacle nervous. Izuku. Yes it is, but don't tell anyone okay? May. Okay, but then you loan me a big favor sawing the package and pointing his fingers at the boy. Izuku. Okay May giving her a small smile well, I have to go back to class, see you later before leaving she gives May a kiss on the forehead, stopping her from blushing. Time skip. The whole day was normal until the mother caterpillar made an important announcement. Azawa. Well everyone, I have an important announcement boring, but it caught everyone's attention we are going to go to a camp. Everyone was surprised by that. Azawa. Shut up activating his quirk, scaring everyone and thus silencing them, but only those who can pass the tests that we will give them will go to this camp when saying that, several teachers like All Mikth and Midnight entered. All Mikth. That's right and we will be the proof with his typical smile. Everyone had a lot of doubts when they heard that. Izumi. Sorry, but how can you be the test? Confused. Midnight. What we mean is that you will face us surprising everyone, and if you defeat us you will be able to go to camp. Izumi. And those who don't. Azawa. They will stay here doing intensive training without any rest he said, making all his students tremble. Azawa. Well you have a week off to prepare for the test, so let's train returning to his sleeping bag and being carried around like a sack of potatoes. All mixed. That's right young people so train and give your plus ultra with your smile and going out with the others. Time skip exit. Everyone was leaving, but a certain group of girls were on their knees begging a black haired man to train them. Jiru. Please train Izuku. Aung. Izuku. Ha. Huh. Izumi. Please Oni-chan train us also bowing. Izuku. Why? Momo. Because you are the strongest in the entire class and you defeated one of the big three effortlessly. Sai. Please Midorilla chan Jiro. Izuku thought about it for a moment, even Kasumi was included, a little embarrassed, but she was, the black-haired man had no choice but to accept. Izuku. I'll help you, but I won't be nice, you understand. All. Hi. Izuku. Well, I want you to go to this address giving you a small piece of paper. Momo. But is this beach full of garbage? Izuku. Just go, I have to talk to everyone for a moment, see you at training girls going to see your teacher. The black-haired boy continued walking, immersed in his thoughts, but was taken out because he collided with his midnight teacher, causing her to drop some evaluation sheets. Midnight. Kaya climbing on her buttocks. Izuku. Sorry Midnight Sensei I didn't see it helping her pick up her papers. Midnight. It's okay. At one point their gazes met and the teacher, looking closely, saw the boy's empty eyes. That made her a little sad, but then she realized that she was staring at him, and she just blushed and got up quickly. Midnight. WW well I am leaving blushing and taking all the papers. Izuku. Wait, let me help you taking half of the pile of papers. Midnight. No need, I can do it nervous and a little blushing. Izuku. It's okay, after all I can't let a pretty girl try so hard with a smile that made her like a tomato. During the walk to the teacher's room at midnight she was very blushing while she looked askance at the black-haired boy and thought. Midnight. God told me pretty and in the back he is a real gentleman for some reason I feel safe with him, well he is cute, very handsome, he has a beautiful face, and Aya, what am I thinking about is one of my students well he is cute, he always helps others I think I fell in love. When she got to the teacher's room she just put the stack of papers on the desk and was about to leave until she saw that sensei had a blush when she looked at that. She surprised him a little, and she knew why that blush was. Izuku. Hey midnight sensei getting her attention. Midnight. Why yes nervous. Izuku just smiled and slowly approached her teacher and kissed her, surprising her. Midnight. He is kissing me, he is really kissing me this is incredible. They both just let themselves be carried away by the kiss until they separated for air. Midnight. Ah Izuku as she gasped. Izuku. What's wrong my pretty sensei? While she subtly touched the teacher's body. Midnight. Why did you do that? Holding the boy with a little lust. Izuku. It's obvious, isn't it? I did it because I like you sensei kissing the black haired girl again. The black haired woman could not contain herself any longer and paid attention to her feelings saved by her, reciprocating the kiss of her student. Both were increasing the intensity and Midnight slowly unbuttoned the boy's shirt and began to rub against his chest but was stopped by the black haired man. Izuku. I'm sorry, my beautiful sensei, but we still can't, especially here separating himself from the kiss and stopping his teacher. Midnight. But she didn't finish since she was silenced by a kiss from the black-haired man. Izuku. Don't worry, I promise you that we will continue another day with a confident smile, I promise you. Midnight. Good, but I hope the wait is worth it somewhat annoying, and call me Namuri when we are alone blushing. Izuku. Good Namuri-chan with a smile and saying goodbye with a kiss to his beloved teacher, while she watched him leave with a smile. Izuku when she walked away just smiled evilly and thought. Izuku. My plan is going perfectly, if I continue like this, maybe I'll get one or another extra prize. After a while of searching for his teacher, she did not find him, and only thought that he had gone home. 
Time skip. It was a nice day, and some girls were talking while going to a beach to train. Momo. Why did she ask us to go to the beach full of garbage? Jiru. I don't know but he will have his reasons. Izumi. Oni-chan sure has something special in store for us excited to train with her brother. When the girls arrived they were amazed and amazed when they arrived at the beach since it was clean and without any garbage. In that we see Izuku sitting on the sand watching the sea calmly and peacefully. On the other hand, the girls only had a blush because when they saw the boy he looked angelic since the sun hit him and made him look beautiful. They all had a nosebleed, but they just shook their heads and went to where Izuku was. Izumi. Hello Oni-chan, we're here. Izuku just turned and saw the others. Izuku. Well this is about to start standing up, sigh. Edo Midorilla-chan, isn't this beach full of garbage? Izuku. Yes before, but I cleaned it with a smile. Everyone was surprised when they heard that, but it didn't last as it put the girls in order. Izuku. Well, I want you all to line up ordering the others. The girls just listened and listened and settled. Izuku. Well, today let each of you improve and learn to control her quirk, speaking as if he were a military man, first you pointing at Chiru. You have a great advantage at long distance, but short distance you don't know how to fight, I will teach you martial arts and how to reduce the enemy. Jiru. Hi, Izuku. You pointing at Momo are good at melee, but you don't have aim, that's why you prefer to use a cannon, you will learn to use firearms and long distance weapons to reduce the cost of your quirk. Momo. Hi, Izuku. You pointing towards Izumi and Kasumi you are also good at long distance, but you barely know how to defend yourself in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and Izumi you will train how to control your flames and be able to make solid shapes with them like a sword or armor. Izumi. Hi, Izuku. And the others will train equally in all these areas and also in terms of dexterity, strength, etc. Mina, Sayu and Toru. Hi, Izuku. But you pointing at Toru will not only help you know how to fight, I will help you so that you can control your quirk and be visible. Toru. Seriously surprised, Izuku. Of course I thought of a way to achieve this, but I'm not sure it works, it's up to you whether to try it. Toru. Yes, I do decided. Izuku just smiled a little and told him to follow her instructions. Izuku. Okay, well I want you to sit in the lotus position. The girl was only paying attention to the attentive gaze of all the others. Izuku well, she closed her eyes she just heard what was said, and Izuku stood behind her and began to whisper in her ear well, I want you to have a completely blank mind. Toru. Izuku W what are you doing surprised and blushing, she only received a sap from the boy. Toru. Kaiei. Izuku. I told you to keep your mind blank, just close your eyes and ignore me, just listen, I agreed. Toru. D I agree she just obeyed and closed her eyes until her mind was blank ready. Izuku. Well, I want you to imagine a door in front of you, at the same time. Toru. Yes, Izuku. Well, I want you to walk towards her and take the knob. She only used it in case. Toru. Ready. Izuku. Now just open the door. She looked at him and saw how he was in her room. Izuku. Now where are you? Toru. In my room. Izuku. Well, you see that the light is on, right? Toru saw and yes, the light is on. Toru. Yes it is. Izuku. Okay now I want you to find the switch and turn it off. She quickly found the switch and just turned it off, turning off the light. Izuku. Okay now I want you to open your eyes slowly. They just said it and little by little she saw how she could see her hands and feet lying on the sand. Izuku. Momo could I create a mirror please? She did what she asked for and gave it to Toru who for the first time could see her face. When she saw her face she could only shed tears and begin to cry with happiness for seeing her face for the first time. She just hugged Izuku and started crying into her chest asking for thanks. Toru. Thank you, really, thank you crying like a little girl. All her other classmates were happy for the girl and Izuku just stroked her hair. Izuku. Yes, everything is fine and there is no need to thank you, you were the one who did everything, I just guided you. That only made the girl cry more, and at one point she couldn't take it anymore and kissed the boy who was in front of him. Izuku was surprised but returned the kiss while everyone looked at them with anger and a blush. Izumi. Hey what do you think you're doing blushing? Toru just wiped away his tears and answered. Toru. What do you think I do? I just kiss my future husband. Momo. He never agreed to be your boyfriend, much less your husband angry and blushing. Toru. Girls, don't even be jealous after all, he belongs to all of us, right? With a mischievous smile and a blush, they all blushed and turned away so he wouldn't see them. Izuku. Well standing up we have to continue training. All. Hi, that's part 2. Izuku and her harem were walking toward school. Izuku's training was very intense for the girls, but they were happy to be stronger. In training Izuku taught Toru how to control her quirk, she can even make herself invisible even to her clothes, he also gave the girl self-defense arts and helped each one better control her quirk. Now we see each of the black-haired man's companions with their hero costumes. Azawa. 
Well everyone is so smart, all. Hi, note. Everything was like the Anaim except some, Jiru and Izumi fraud against. Present Mick both managed to win since Izumi burned her speakers, and Jiru using his was able to knock him out, making his eardrums bleed a little. Sayu and Tokoyami against Inktoplas both won since Sayu was able to detect the real one, but she was caught and somewhat beaten by the clones of her and left Tokoyami to catch him. The Bakugo brothers faced off against Endeavor. The brothers used their gloves full of their sweat to defeat and arrest the hero, but in the end they managed to win. Momo and Toru beat Azawa because of the tricks that Izuku gave them, and Momo was able to make a gun with paralyzing bullets to defeat the hero, and Toru only allowed him to fight hand to hand, since it was more difficult for Azawa to see her, since her clothes no longer he looked floating as before. After all the battles she could see on a panel what was the last battle she was going to give. Note. Mina, Kirishima and their partners did lose like in the Anime, Azawa. Well, the last fight will be between Izuku and Shauka against someone interrupts him, all migs against me with his typical smile. Everyone who heard that was only surprised since Izuku against all mates knew that the battle was going to be epic. Time skip battlefield. The countryside was an entire city or like a simulation of one. Note. This is the Shaka hero costume. Shaka. Do you have a plan? Izuku. I attacked Melee, prevented him from touching you, and you freeze and burn him at long range. Said cold. But at one point a large current of air almost blew the young people away, showing all mates with his typical smile. All mates. That's a good shonen plan, but I shouldn't lose making a big gust of air and punching the air. Izuku only hugged Shaka to protect her from being thrown into the air. Izuku. Okay all migs releasing Shaka let's dance activating one for all and going to attack all migs with everyone. Izuku attacked the blonde with a one for all at 50%, giving strong blows to the blonde that he only returned, and Shaka hung and burned the blonde's back. All migs. Midorilla Shonen's punches are very good, they are very powerful if I continue like this I will lose, and the weights don't help. The blonde only hit the ground hard, separating the two, and he only hit on the roofs to defeat one of the two. Izuku activated her ghoul eye trying to see Shaka, but saw all migs coming towards her at full speed, and he alone increased the percentage of one for all to 70% matching her speed. Shaka was nervous she didn't know where her partner was, and if she faced all migs alone, she knew she would lose in seconds. But then a smokescreen appeared when the muscular blonde fell to the ground, trying to attack the two-colored girl by surprise. The blonde was only going to hit him, but when he closed his eyes waiting for the hit that never came, and Izuku appeared with his left eye different and stopping all Mig's goal. Izuku. Shaka while she looks in amazement at the boy stopping the blonde's blow I told you that he wouldn't touch you with a smile, but you have to attack him. She just understood and came out of her surprise and began to create fire from the left side of her, burning the blonde's right arm. All Migs just separated from both of them and thought somewhat frustrated. All Migs. Since it got there so fast, what percentage of one for all are you using? Izuku only began to hit each other with more and more powerful blows, and at one point Shaka burned the blonde's other arm, making him complain of pain. All Migs. You should keep it like this I will lose. But the blonde noticed that his wrists felt lighter, and when he saw them he noticed that the weights were no longer there. All Migs. Haha thanks to you my hands are now free, now you are at a disadvantage with his typical smile. Izuku. I'm sorry all migs, but she's still at a disadvantage while she looked at the blonde coldly Shaka looks for the exit. Shaka. But. Izuku. I'll be fine, just run. Shaka only did as ordered, but all migs only launched himself towards Shaka. All migs. He didn't allow it he didn't finish since Izuku hit him with 80% that sent him flying. Izuku. Run. Shaka just started running looking for the exit. All migs. That was a good hit, but now you're alone. Izuku. No, alright, now you're alone with me Izuku just snapped his finger, and four tentacles came out of his back, giving the black-haired man a more intimidating shape. But the spectators. Everyone was amazed because Izuku was able to maintain a fight with all migs with just his fists, but when he took out his tentacles, he only knew that when he fought him now he was really going. Izawa. It looks like this is getting interesting watching the fight carefully. Everyone only saw them silently, but some girls and a teacher mentally encouraged Izuku. In the battle, Izuku only gave superficial cuts to all migs with his kagyun, so as not to hurt him too many, but all migs knew that he still had the dry, so he hit him in the chest that sent him flying. Shaka was only looking for her way out, but when he managed to see her, he saw how Izuku crossed a building scaring her and worrying her. All migs. Midorilla Shonen I know you're holding back yet, but I won't do it with you walking towards both as my role as a villain I have to destroy the heroes, so I won't hold back about to hit Shaka, but Izuku moved and he pushed it away, receiving the blow that sent him flying, but a metal bar from a beam hit the black haired man's chest, leaving everyone who saw the fight in Shaka and all migth in shock. Izuku only remained embedded in the beam, while Shaka and all migth only saw that while both just let out tears as they saw their friend and successor die in front of them. Shaka. 
Izuku, Izuku while he ran to help his partner, all mixed. As shonen while you see your hands what was that ice while he cried. Everyone else in the surveillance room was the same, Izuku's lovers just cried, and all the teachers and classmates just watched in shock as their partner just died. Shauka was just trying to get his friend off the beam, but at one point everyone felt a terrifying aura that paralyzed and terrified them all. And in a moment they saw how Izuku moved, pulling out a tentacle that cut the beam, making it easier for him to get out. Everyone stopped crying and lamenting at that moment. Izuku. Well all migged well he took off his glasses showing empty and terrifying eyes, then I won't hold back either. All migs came out of shock when he felt a strong blow to the face from the black-haired man. Izuku. You know all migs, I was right, I held back a lot in the fight, but it wouldn't be fair if I did it, right? Looking at it, it looks terrifying. Izuku just took all migs by the feet with his kagyun and began to hit him on the ground and some buildings until he saw him very hurt. And in a moment Izuku touched the ground and roots came out of it that trapped all migs. Note. Izuku trained some quirks from other wielders. Quirk of the fourth wielder. Roots can use roots, plants or seeds to trap his enemies with them. Everyone and the others were only surprised that Izuku had another quirk. And Izuku only approached all migs with a terrifying aura that scared him quite a bit, while he only cleaned his glasses that had blood on them. Izuku. Will all migs as he stood in front of him do you give up? All migs just reacted and followed his role. All migs. Why if I give up knowing I couldn't win? At one point Principal Nezu's voice came over the speakers. Nezu. H heroes win. At that moment the students quickly came down to see an Izuku with a cold look and a very injured All Migs. Izuku. It was a good fight Oromato shaking his hand. All Migs just hugged his successor while he cried. All Migs. Sorry Shonen for almost killing him while hugging the figure of his son tightly. Izuku. Calm down All Migs returning the hug I can't even die so easily happy why his father figure cares about him. Everyone saw that scene that he could call father and son and at one point he was tackled by his sister and his childhood friend. Izumi. Baka well he beat his chest and cried what the hell were you thinking, you almost died. Hisumi. You're an idiot crying I was worried about you. Izuku just patted both of their heads as he said that he was fine. Izuku. Girls, I'm fine lifting his shirt and showing that he didn't even have a scar. Everyone was amazed since he didn't even leave a mark on the wound, but a bicolor approached and put Izuku's head on his breasts while he cried. Shaka. Stupid, why did you do it crying? Izuku. Well, I told you that he wasn't even going to touch you, and besides, he couldn't let you die caressing his face and drying his tears. Shauka just cried when she heard that, and after a few hours they calmed down and checked Izuku to see if he was fully cured. Time skip. After a few hours of checkups by recovery girl, the students only returned to their classrooms. Azawa. Well, as you already know, you all passed and will go to the camp that surprised everyone. Hiroshima. What but me and Sato lost surprised. Mina. And me too. Azawa. Well the camp will be for training too, so those who lost will obviously go too. Mina. Ye cheerful. Azawa. Don't be happy since you guys will have intensive training disheartened. Azawa. And by the way, why are all of you like this? Seeing how all the girls in the room were still holding on to and hugging Izuku while also sitting next to him. Izumi. I don't want to let go of my oni chan it would be. Momo. Me neither. They all gave the same answer, and Mineta and Kaminari just cursed the black haired man. Kaminari. Midorilla traitor. Mineta. Damn why wasn't it me? Jiru. You'd probably be dead if you'd been your idiot. Azawa. Well, everyone can go now except your Izuku, your goods with me to the address serious. Izumi. But, Izuku. Don't worry, Izumi, I'll go with you later, okay? With a smile. Izumi. Good sad. Izuku. Well, see you at the exit kissing each girl on the forehead. But Izuku. Izuku was in a chair in front of the entire top of heroes who were looking at him seriously. Izuku. Why did they call me? Somewhat nervous. Nezu. You should already know why serious. Izuku. Is it because I didn't die when that beam pierced my chest? Azawa. And because of the roots that came out of the ground. Izuku. I'm sorry but I can't tell you that surprising everyone the only one I can tell is all migth. Everyone looked at all migth in surprise. End of her. And why? Izuku. It's something that he and I have in common and we can't say to just anyone. All migth took the hint and knew that he was talking about one for all. All migth. My shonen is right, it's a private thing getting up from the chair you can accompany me to a more private place shonen. Izuku. Sure, all right leaving next to him, leaving the others somewhat surprised by the secret that they couldn't hear, but all migth and Izuku. They were both in the all migth drying room sitting. All migth. And well. Izuku. Well, it's a very long story. Izuku told him all about his life and also about the core of his one for all, which surprised the Rubio. All migth. Incredible I didn't know that the one for all had so many secrets surprised, so I could too was stopped by Izuku. Izuku. 
I'm sorry all mate, but I won't be able to, his flame is already being paid, maybe he would have made it if he didn't have that injury, but he won't be able to anymore I'm sorry frustrated and upset, since he wanted to give his father figure some good news, all mate. Calm down Midorilla Shonen surprising the boy at least I know that my successor has already surpassed me, and all of Japan in the future will be in good hands with his typical smile. That only made Izuku happy, and he hugged everyone. After a while talking, everyone understood why the secret had to be kept. All mixed. Okay I won't say anything to the others. Izuku. Thank you Oromato happy well I have to go the girls must be waiting for me outside getting up goodbye Oromato. All mixed. Goodbye Midorilla Shonen. I'm Skip. After saying goodbye, Izuku alone walked home with his girls, and when he went to sleep, Izumi alone lay down next to Izuku, since she did not want to be separated from him. Izuku. Well it was a long day, but at least he asks to try my other quirk, and little by little, I'm surpassing everyone, and very soon you too. Part 7 Preparation and Camping The day was a normal day for everyone and a black-haired man dressed casually accompanied by his classmates buying things for the camp. Mina. Well, we have to buy insect repellent and maybe a sleeping bag. Momo. No need, let's sleep indoors. Sai. Yes, Jiro. Haminari. Guys say we are going to a place with hot springs excited. Izuku. And. Mineta. And that we can spy on the girls while they bathe they are their typical perverted tone. The girls heard that and just looked at him with disgust and a little nervous. Izuku. You know, Mineta, it's not like men to spy on girls he said as if it were Kirishima. Kirishima. My bro is right, it's not for men. That only depressed Mineta Bu Kaminari separating from the group and going somewhere else. Lita. Good everyone gaining the attention of others we will separate and go to compare what is necessary we do not see here at 3, going to see some running shoes in a store. Izumi. Well, how about we go see cute clothes girls happy. All. Hi. The boys went different ways, the girls went together, leaving a certain black haired man alone, but he didn't care much. Izuku. Well, what can I do? thinking until someone caught his attention. Excuse me, are you one of the famous UA students who appeared on television at the sports festival? Said a hooded girl. Izuku. If I'm one of them, what can I do for you curious? And I hug you somewhat nervous. Izuku. Sure giving her a hug, but in that she grabs the back of her neck. I have you hear a whispering in Izuku's ear, exalting a little, but he didn't even flinch. Izuku. Hello Tamura or should I say Shiko surprising the girl that when she said that name her heart stopped beating for a moment. Note. Tamura will be female. Shiko. How do you know that name angrily overcoming Izuku's neck with force? Izuku. Why don't we sit down and talk for a while pointing to a small bench? The girl just ignored him, and they went to sit down while she just held the boy's neck. Shiko. How do you know my real name seeing it would be? Izuku. It wasn't that difficult for me, I just had to change the two of your name and put a shy and form the word Shimura, surprising the girl any idiot could have noticed, of course those who didn't know Nana would have had a hard time little more. Shiko. Did you know my grandmother? Izuku. A little lying and what your boss said is a lie surprising the girl all for one lied to you, all might not be that he took your grandmother away from you. Shako. What? It's a lie taking the boy harder by the neck. Izuku. I'm only telling you the truth, but it will last longer if we go there pointing to an ice cream parlor. Shako. And why? Izuku. I just want an ice cream lying and seeing that the girls were approaching where he is shall we? Shiko. Fine, but if you try to do something it will disintegrate you it would be. Izuku. Fine, but take my arm as if it were your boyfriend, so you look less suspicious with a slight smile. The girl only blushed a little, but she became serious again and went as recommended by the black-haired man. They both got up and went to eat ice cream, while the girl didn't let go of the boy to make sure he didn't run away or do something stupid. Salesman. Well, what do you want the cute couple seeing both with a smile? Shiko. No we are not but was interrupted by Izuku. Izuku. One mint for me and one vanilla for her. The man just gave them each an ice cream, and then they sat at a bar that the place had. Shiko. Well, would you tell me how you know who I am? While she was eating her ice cream. Izuku. If I told you, would you believe me? Shiko. Just speak if you lie I will know and I will disintegrate you. Izuku. Well, let's say that I have some memories of the previous one for all bearers surprising the girl, I guess your boss already told you about him, right? Shiko. Yes, but it's only a strength increasing power. Izuku. It seems that old all didn't tell you everything, why do you think he's so obsessed with him? The girl just thought for a moment and analyzed what the boy said carefully and she was right if it was just an augmentation quirk she wouldn't care much. Shiko. And what does that have to do with my grandmother? Izuku. The old man told you that he killed all the bearers except All Might and me, right? Shiko. Yes. Izuku. Well, as he said, he murdered all the former carriers and your grandmother Nana was one of them leaving the girl in shock. Shiko. It's not a lie grabbing Izuku by the neck. Izuku. 
Well, how about I show it to you touching the girl's forehead with two fingers, putting hers in an illusion. Work of the second where illusion can fool people or create illusions by just touching the person. At that moment Shiko could only see the memory of how All for One killed her grandmother and then how she blamed All Might for her death by using her as a tool to obtain the one for Al. Out of the illusion, the girl could only cry inconsolably as she watched her grandmother die in the hands of those who had previously been a father and teacher to them. Shiko. It's not a lie crying, but she felt how Izuku hugged her. Izuku. I know it's hard, believe me, I know, but as a great man once told me, you have to accept them and become stronger. The girl only began to cry a little harder and poured out her anger on the black-haired boy's chest. Shiko. Thank you for telling me the truth crying. Izuku. Don't worry, I don't want anyone to go through what I did hugging her, but tell me you want revenge that surprised the girl, Shiko. Yes, if I want, I want to kill that old man and then kill him for what it is taking Izuku's shirt tightly and disintegrating it a little, Izuku. Good because I have a piece of bread, but you have to tell me his future plans so that they are infallible okay. Wiping away the girl's tears, the girl just obeyed and told Izuku her plans that they wanted to kidnap Bakugo and maybe kill a hero in the process. Shiko. And tell me why you want to do this and not just stop it and then like a hero would do it. Izuku. I like the old school better and you're not the only one who has something pending with him, I'll tell you one day, but for now you have to leave smelling the smell of his classmates. My other classmates are nearby and can't see you giving him a kiss on the girl's forehead, goodbye Shiko-chan crying. The girl lonely blushed a little, but she also went to think about everything that happened today. Time skip bus. The boys were just talking in the car on the way to camp, and a certain black-haired man had a bored face looking out the window, but he had a silver briefcase on his lap. Izumi. Hey Oni-chan, what do you have in that briefcase? Curious. Izuku. Something May gave me, maybe you'll see it when we train looking out the window. That only aroused more curiosity in the people around her, but Izumi just took her arm and snuggled next to her, making the others jealous. After an hour the boys arrived at her destination. Mineta. Where is the bathroom running looking for a bathroom? They all got out but saw that he was still on the road. Hiroshima. Hey we haven't arrived yet. Yes we know. Everyone saw four very particular people dressed as cats. Hello guys, I'm Mandalay waving happily. I am Pixabob, I'm Ragdoll, and I am Tiger. The four of us. And we are the Will Will Hussy Cats taking a pose. Everyone was amazed they were the acclaimed team of heroes Hussy Cats. Pixie. Hello, I'm 18 at heart waving to Izuku. Izuku. Nice to meet you Miss Pixabob kissing her wrist like a gentleman. That action only made the blonde girl who only hid behind Mandalay blush. Mandalay. Well, hello, we are going to train all of you during your stay in the camp he said happily. Momo. Nice to meet you, but we haven't reached the camp yet confused. Ragdoll. We know that you will have to get there. It just confused everyone, but then something clicked in everyone's head and they understood what he was referring to. Hiroshima. Everyone to the bus they all ran but were stopped by a certain blonde. Pixie. I'm sorry but it won't happen using her quirk touching the ground and making everyone fall off the cliff. Ragdoll. Good luck but he saw Izuku in the back of the car it seems that we were left with one launching to attack the black haired man, but he only avoided his attacks. Izuku. I'm sorry Miss Ragdoll, but I can't fight you now jumping and falling off the cliff. Mandalay. What a curious boy. But the rest. Jiru. I that hurt rubbing his butt. Momo. Yes, they're fine. All. Yes, at that point they saw Izuku fall elegantly, and Mineta just started screaming and looking for a bathroom. Mineta. I can't stand it anymore hiding behind a tree, but was grabbed by the pants by a four-legged golem. Everyone was looking at the creatures. Lita. What is that? Highly strung. Izuku. Don't worry, it's just Pixabob's quirk, it seems like they're not going to let us have it easy. Izuku just one kick destroyed the golem, and he began to advance calmly through the forest. Lita. Well let's go. All. Hi. The boys only advanced until they reached a small clearing, but then hundreds of golems appeared, suggesting that it was an ambush. Mineta. What do we do terrified? Izuku. Guys, please bend down no one understood, but at that point they only saw Izuku get in front of everyone and press a button that loaded his briefcase. When they pressed the button they only saw the golems destroy themselves, and then they saw Izuku with a black side and giving off a crimson glow. Izuku just looked at his classmates who were more scared by the figure the boy gave them. Izuku. See you at the camp activating the missing one for all. But the teachers. The Zawa could be seen sleeping in a hammock, and the hussy cats could be seen playing cards. Everything was calm until an explosion was seen near them, the idols alerted and saw red eyes with a side that only scared them. The hussy cats just got on guard, but Azawa already knew what it was, so he just ignored it and continued sleeping. The smoke only dispersed showing Izuku with his side, surprising everyone. Izuku. What's wrong? It seems that they saw death with a small smile. Izuku just approached them and pressed a button on the part of the side, turning it into the briefcase. Mandalay. 
T that briefcase that is nervous, Izuku. Just a gift from a friend seeing that what she asked may works perfectly well, I'll settle into my room walking inside what looked like a hot spring hotel. Hi I'm Skip. After a few hours everyone arrived very sweaty and tired. Pixie. Congratulations arrived happy, but they arrived very late compared to him pointing to Izuku who was eating ice cream sitting and leaning on a tree. Akugo. Damn how you came so fast angry and tired, Izuku. I just ran a little, it wasn't a big deal while still eating ice cream, Pixie. Hey, do you want to share that ice cream in a seductive way, and by chance also your body about to pounce on Izuku, but being stopped by Mandalay. Mandalay. Forgive her for her old age and her lack of a boyfriend, while she was holding Pixabob in her arms. At that Izawa woke up and spoke to his daughter. Izawa. Well they're very late so they won't eat, except for Izuku depressing everyone, but I can't starve them so they'll have to prepare their own food. That surprised everyone, and Izuku only laughed a little. Izuku. Haha good luck guys he was crying, but on the way he saw a boy with a red cap and the same face as Bakugo. Izuku. Hey child, what are you doing here? Rod Hero trying to punch him, but Izuku stopped him easily. Izuku. You know, attacking your elders is bad manners, especially if they haven't done anything to you with a cold and emotionless look that terrified the child. That look only made the child run away in terror. Izuku. What's wrong? Mandalay. Forgive him, my nephew, he's been like this since his parents died. Izuku. I think it must be hard looking in the boy's direction. Time skip. After Izuku's classmates prepared their dinner they just went to relax in the hot springs. Hiroshima. AI how relaxing relaxing in the waters. Everyone is relaxing, but I feel like a perverted dwarf ruined the moment. Mineta. Yes, but that's not all drawing the attention of others behind this wall are the girls. Just imagine, I'm going to go up who's coming with my go. No one was encouraged as they just wanted to relax after the long day. Mineta. Well, I don't care, I'm going up climbing the wall, but was stopped by a certain boy at the top of the wall. Hoda. Before being a hero, learn to become a man hitting him with a bucket. Mineta. Damn falling head first. The boy was only serious until he saw the girls when he was called. Uraka. Thank you Koda. At that moment he clearly saw the body of each girl and only got a runny nose falling from the wall, but before falling, he was grabbed by the foot by Izuku, who was at the top of the wall holding Koda. Izuku. Are you okay? The child only fainted due to blood loss. Izuku. It seems not. Izuku alone came down from the wall without realizing that he placed him on the girl's side next to his towel, revealing his dekikanda to the others. Izuku only realized when he stepped on the towel and quickly put it on, seeing that there were also calluses on the girl's side, and he just apologized and left quickly, but the girls only had one thought that's great with a tremendous nosebleed and a massive blush. Dot. With Izuku. Izuku only walked until he reached Mandalay, knocking him unconscious and talking to the heroine. Izuku. And that happened. Mandalay. I understand well, thank you for protecting Koda. Izuku. Out of curiosity, what happened to Koda's parents? Mandalay. They were killed by a villain called Muscular, and since then Koda hates the heroes for not arriving in time to save his parents ad when remembering the moment and shedding a few tears. Seeing that, Izuku could only hug the girl and apologize for what she said. Izuku. I'm sorry for reminding him of that ugly moment, and I'm sorry for the loss of his sister hugging the girl. The girls only accepted the hug, and in the end they just said goodbye, and Izuku just went to finish bathing and then go to sleep. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day bye.